So, Chiori has finally arrived, and after playing with her for a while, I gotta say, this showcase video is going to be full of twists, because I've tested her with 4 different weapons and the results shocked me. But what surprised me even more was the comparison between Chiori and Albedo, two units that are very similar but tell a different story when you actually see their performance. So strap in boys, girls and gacha gamers, because I wanna show you everything about this Inazuma fashion designer, so you can see for yourself how good is Constellation Zero Chiori. So, Chiori is the new 5-star Geo Sword unit who specializes in off-field damage while you're busy playing with your main damage dealer. She's a fairly simple unit when it comes to her playstyle, but there are a couple of things that make her unique. So let's first take a look at her personal damage. For now, she's equipped with the fully refined Harbinger of Dawn sword, but later on it will be compared to Cinnabar Spindle, Festering Desire and her signature sword, while her main artifact set for this showcase is going to be Golden Troop. But honestly, Husk of Opulent Dreams is not that far behind, and I just use Golden Troop because of stronger substats. Also, keep in mind all of her talents are dual scaling with attack and defense, so so that's why she has Defense Sands, because it's a bit better stat for her. And finally, all of her talents are max level 10 and she's Constellation Zero. Now, just to quickly show her solo potential, her burst deals a single AoE attack which results in about 33,000 damage and it costs 50 energy. So pretty cheap, but probably the best thing about it is that it's really pretty, subjectively speaking. Still, the majority of her damage comes from the skill. Just like with Kaching or Alhatham, you can select where you want to teleport, and then she does this 25k damage slash attack. And more importantly, this doll called Tomoto shows up. Every 3.6 seconds, it will deal about 13,700 damage, and this will happen for a total of 5 times over 16 second duration. So, taking into consideration all the other 5 stars released in the past, her solo potential without teammates is pretty much what you would expect, and she does possess decent raw damage potential. But here's where things get interesting. Thanks to her first passive talent, when Chiori uses her skill, she has a small timing window where you can decide to either press the attack button or skill. If you press attack, she gains Geo Infusion for 5 seconds and then proceeds to hit like a wet noodle because nothing else in her kit amplifies her normal attacks. So forget about it. But if you instead press the skill again, she will immediately switch to the next character and now a second doll can be potentially deployed. You see, this will only happen if there's another Geo Construct on the field or if one is created when the first doll is active. But most important of all, when you switch to the next character, no matter who attacks afterwards, for 8 seconds, the dolls can unleash a coordinated attack every 2 seconds, but only for a total of 2 times. However, the damage is pretty good, not gonna lie. And all you gotta do is to make sure to hit with normal charge plunging attack with anyone to trigger the coordinated attack. Oh, and one more thing, because of her second passive talent, she gains 20% Geo damage buff for 20 seconds when anyone creates a Geo construct, so expect this to be always active on her when playing in Geo teams. But that's pretty much her entire rotation. Do the burst, then skill, and switch out to let her dolls do the rest of the work. In a fully built Geo team with C6 Goro buffs, it takes about 4.5 seconds of Chiori's field time to set up the whole rotation, and then for the next 16 seconds while the dolls last, she will unleash a total of 486,000 damage. I wish my Goro was C0 so his C6 wouldn't provide a huge critical damage buff, but it is what it is. However, Chiori's damage is still pretty good for a Geo unit. Now, if we take a look at her damage breakdown, you can see here that her dolls make up a total of 50% of her entire damage, while the two coordinate attacks make up 22%, and that the burst is responsible for 16%, and skill slash attack for 12% of her entire damage output. Basically, her skill, when fully utilized, makes up the majority of her damage output. It's her entire identity, and no matter what your opinion is about playing with dollies, they are her lifeline. In fact, let me tell you everything about these dolls. And starting with energy generation, it's pretty random. The dolls will generate particles up to 5 times, and usually it will be one particle, maybe sometimes two, but it's a pretty low chance, so expect on average 5 to 7 particles. And there's also a cooldown between particles, so even if there's two dolls hitting the enemy at the same time, it's just hardcoded to provide particles every 3.6 seconds. Next, 
targeting. It's pretty easy. You don't need to hit the enemy. The dolls have a mind of their own and will just attack anybody who gets close to them. Which brings us to range. It's not big, I would say medium at best. You can see me even pushing the doll to find the maximum range, which is pretty funny that they can be moved around. And speaking of being a pushover, durability is good. The dolls do not count as constructs, which means the stupid 3 construct limit does not apply to them. And compared to Albedo's flower, they will not get destroyed by enemy attacks. At least Mago Kenki wasn't able to do it. And you can even summon them on Oceanet's floor, no problemo. I mean, look at poor Albedo trying to do the same. And instead he just generates one more doll for Chiori. That's foreshadowing of what's to come later in this video. Now, AoE is pretty bad, basically non-existent. I tried forcing these big hunks of junk to stay together, and one time it worked. You can see here both of them getting hit with one single doll attack, but the enemies will need to be almost on top of each other for this to happen. Unless you use animal units for grouping, which I suspect won't be a popular choice. But yeah, in a nutshell, these dolls are super chill. They will do their job and they won't disappoint you. The damage is good and it scales well with other buffs. However, one important thing to mention would be the fact that her skill does not snapshot. To me, that was a pretty shocking discovery because this means she will not be able to utilize Goro's defense and Geo boost buff from the skill when she's off field. Not to mention, Benny Circle also fizzles out in potential, since now only her burst and initial skill hit will be boosted. However, Goro still remains her best buffer because his passive when burst is activated still provides defense boost and of course, his C6 still remains active even when she's off field. Overall, when looking at her personal potential with just the Harbinger of Dawn, she's a low complexity unit that can deliver decent amount of supportive damage. But the big question is, how good is she with other weapons? And is she better than Albedo? Well, let's find out. Okay, here's the plan. Harbinger of Dawn's baseline damage has been already established, so we're going to compare it to three other options. Festering Desire, Cinnabar Spindle, and the new 5-star signature weapon, Uraku Misugiri? I don't know. And starting off with good old Festering Desire, surprisingly, the majority of its damage is about the same as Harbinger of Dawn's. But if we take into account that you'll need more critical rate substats, it ends up about dealing 10% less damage. However, it does provide energy recharge from the substat, which means Chiori will be able to very easily burst every rotation. Overall, this old event weapon is not something to worry about if you don't have it, because Harbinger of Dawn will be better in most cases, unless you run into those Rift Hounds. Now, Cinnabar Spindle, that's a different story. This weapon gave me a headache when I was trying to understand its passive's logic because it states that it will provide 80% defense buff for elemental skill damage every 1.5 seconds, but the thing is, it felt so random. Sometimes both doll hits would benefit from the buff, other times just one doll, so it was pretty random, but ultimately, it ended up beating both previous weapons with a chunky 21% overall damage increase. I don't know, my methods of testing might be flawed here because I just repeated the rotation with roughly the same loadout. But brace yourselves because the signature weapon completely demolishes its competition and ends up dealing about 45% better damage than Harbinger. Again, I tried my best to just record a scenario where all hits count as critical hits and this was the result. Don't quote me as a reliable source, this was field testing data, so the crits wouldn't be as consistent as with Harbinger of Dawn. However, I mean geez, this damage gap is pretty disgusting. Disgusting, not gonna lie. I tell ya, this weapon is tailor made for Chiori, if you know what I mean. But should you pull for it? Nah, the weapon banner is a scam, but it's a really nice vertical investment, at least from my own experience. Overall, this testing with all four weapons was done with a full Geo team with C6 Goro, and some of the buffs for her do wear off before the two final hits from each stall, so it's very possible a better rotation could be found for the weapons to beat Signature's big advantage, and of course, it's still just early impressions that I'm providing you guys here with, so take everything you saw here with a huge grain of salt. I just found this to be very interesting and wanted to share with you all. Also, there are other weapons that Shiori can definitely utilize, like Fontaine's Craftable and Battle Pass Swords, or any of the 5 star stat sticks, but to my knowledge, all of them fall within the same range between Cinnabar and Harbinger of Dawn, so it's more like which stats do you need more. But. You know what else tickled my curiosity? My sweet Albedo. I mean look, it's no secret if you watch my channel, I feature him in a lot of shots and I have the best memories about him thanks to Amazing Dragon Spine storyline during Christmas. But I'll be honest. 
things are not looking great for him. And you know why? When I recorded Chiori's footage with trusty old Drake here, everything went smooth. Then I went ahead and wanted to compare Albedo's damage to Chiori's. And guess what happened? His flower got destroyed. Showcase over. Okay, seriously, I had to go to Asimon so he wouldn't crush Albedo's flower. And his damage with Harbinger was, well, how should I say this? Decent, but ended up about being 18% worse than Chiori's. And here's the big plot twist. My Albedo is Constellation 2. So this means when his burst deals damage, it also scales with defense because at C0, the dude is a split scaler. Also, keep in mind Albedo's flower damage becomes way better when the enemy is below 50% HP. So he would catch up to Chiori's potential if that's the case, but in Abyss, you still start fights with enemies who have full health. But even then, even with very similar critical stats they both had, he still ended up losing. Now, to be fair, that Damage is not the only thing I'm comparing. Albedo, unlike Chiori, is not completely selfish. He can provide 125 elemental mastery boost after using his burst, although several team comps don't even want him to use his burst to have fast rotations. Then of course, the fragility of flower comes up. Dolls stay no matter what, flower decays when the boss sneezes. And to add insult to injury, Chiori obtains 19% critical rate from her ascension, while Albedo gains 29% geo damage bonus. And I probably don't have to tell you how critical rate is much more valuable and makes it easier to achieve better builds. Not to mention the fact that Chiori can literally gain 20% geo damage bonus from her second passive. However, Albedo can snapshot all the buffs for this skill, and it does last 30 seconds compared to Chiori's dolls who only stay on the field for 16 seconds. And on top of that, his flower has a much better AoE range than Chiori's dolls. So there is a silver lining, but overall, I feel kind of weird about this. I'm not ready to declare that Chiori is power creeping Albedo, but I also cannot ignore what I just witnessed. So all in all, I want to say that Chiori is better in single target, while Albedo could potentially be as good as her when in AoE scenario. I don't know, maybe I need to make a separate video with more in-depth comparison of all the pros and cons of the two, because I don't want to be that guy who's coping. At least they both suck when it comes to the fact that the enemies can move away from their skills range. Although, I will say this, in my previous video I pondered about Albedo and Chiori's potential to be together, because initially I thought they might have problems with the three construct limit. However, seeing now that Chiori's dolls do not count as a construct, I did build a team with both of them. In fact, I built several strong teams, so let's talk about this in the next part. Essentially, there's three team archetypes I found Chiori to be good at. First one is obviously a mono geo comp with either Ito or Noel. The tricky part here is that if you want to play with Noel and you don't bring someone else who can create a construct since Goro, Noel, and Chiori do not have constructs, the second doll will not be generated unless you shell out your primo gems for her first constellation because now if you use her skill it's enough to just have another geo unit for the doll to appear immediately sure it also provides 50 percent bigger aoe for the dolls but the big selling point here if you want to pull for c1 is that she can deploy second doll without relying on constructs otherwise if you just play her in ito geo comp she will provide a good amount of off-field geo damage and you can of course mix in one other element's unit like Mona, Benny or Furina just to name a few, while Goro, Ito and Chiori remain in the team. But going with Zhongli for extra resistance shred and reliable shielding is going to do wonders both for Chiori and either Ito or Noel. Well, especially Noel, since now the pillar can help summon a second doll. I mean, in the end, it's a mono geocomp that does pretty well in the Korean Abyss. Now, another variation would be double Geo with either Navia or Geo Traveler. Obviously, Navia is the stronger choice. However, again, if Chiori doesn't have the first constellation enabled, Navia will not be able to help Chiori generate the second doll, while Geo Traveler can easily do that with one of those chunky boulders or even burst, since they all count as constructs. And on top of that, Chiori's second passive will not activate with Navia because, well, her Gunbrella does not generate constructs, just pure pain for enemies. Also, Double Geo, Albedo and Chiori can work pretty nicely, like in a similar manner how Yelan and Xingqiu work together, just not as powerful. So it's pretty cool to see this new archetype. Finally, you could also just use Chiori as a solo Geo unit in any team comp where you want additional off-field damage support. 
it will be only one doll, and she will be missing out on a bunch of buffs she could otherwise utilize in geocomps, so take that into consideration. At the end of the day, she's an off-field damage unit that shines best with other geo units, especially if they can create constructs. So more or less, you want her to be in geocentric teams if you want to get the best primo buck out of her. So what do I think about Chiori? I think that she's in a pretty bad situation right now. Harlequino just got announced as the upcoming 4.6 unit. I asked you guys if you're pulling for her and well, the results speak for themselves. I mean, we even have Nuvolet and Kazuha coming up in the second phase, so she's really in a tough spot. And look, I personally love her playstyle, and that mostly has to do with the fact that I love Albedo, in a platonic way of course. I'm not gonna beat around the bush and pretend they don't share a lot of similarities, but as I said before, I'm also not ready to declare that Albedo is power crept by Chiori, because if you haven't noticed, she kinda depends on other Geo units, while Albedo can just chill out by himself and deal pretty much the same damage no matter who you are playing with, unless of course we're talking talking about Goro, who boosts both of them really well, especially at C6. And sure, Albedo still wants that Geo Resonance to function well, but at least half of his damage potential isn't locked behind the requirements for someone to produce a construct. And here's the thing, I don't like Chiori's first constellation at all. Feels a bit of a bait that she can't have two dolls when playing in double Geo Navia team. But on the other hand, this also kind of makes her look not that ridiculous when compared to Albedo. But for what it's worth, I think she's a fun character. And again, subjectively speaking, she has one of the best burst animations in the game, in my humble opinion. But there's definitely some questionable things happening with her. And I will most likely make a follow-up video in the future to share my post-release thoughts. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I would really appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.